Hello, my name is Felicity and today I'm going to be showing you a nifty little tool from the guys at Syncing that will help you to be able to query your Airtable data uh, with all the power of SQL and a Postgres database. So um, let's just jump straight over to Airtable and see how it works. The first thing to note is that you will need a pro account in Airtable uh, because you need to use the sync and cap. So you add that just like you would any other app. Uh, you'll need to, to get it to work, you'll need the syncing account, you'll need to uh, paste your Airtable API key across to syncing, and you'll need to subsequently post their API across to Airtable. Once the data is synced up, uh, you're ready to go. One thing to note about this is that um, because the database is held on sync in servers, then you won't run into some of the limitations that you may have if you've been using the scripting app in Airtable. So for example, just the time it takes to run some of those queries um, and also uh, the, the API limits, you won't hit any of those because you're effectively, uh, you're not querying the data in Airtable, you're querying it on the sync in servers. So why would you want to use SQL in your Airtable? database. There's a lots of really valid reasons. Uh, I'm going to show you a really simple example, something you can already achieve within Airtable, but how you would go about that with uh, uh, this app, this uh, SQL console. And then I'm going to show you a more complex example to show you just the power that's available to you once you have a rich Postgres database at your disposal. So first of all, a really simple example. Imagine this was your inventory tracking and you wanted to see how many sales you've made just online. So that's easy to do within Airtable as is. You just create a filter to begin with. So we have one filter here which just has the platform online. But you actually want to see the totals as well, not just the individual sales. So, okay, that's also easy to do. You just group. So you create another view where you've got everything grouped by the sales platform. And when you group something within Airtable, you get a little summary field up the top of that group. And here we have the sum total of all of these sales online. So how would you achieve the same thing but over here in our console? Well, it's really straightforward. All you need to do is run a very simple query. So here. and run to see if we get the same results here. And this is great, we've got 250. So let's break this down. What are we saying here? Well, we're saying select and we're saying do a sum on sales orders, which is this table here, dot price, that's this field, and we're converting that to an integer. We're saying as online, that means title it when you output it as online, and this can be helpful when you've got some complex field names, um, but you want to report them to something simpler. Uh, from, again this is the table, sales orders, where sale platform here is equal to online. Now there's a few gotchas even in this little script that's worth taking you through. The first thing to note is that we've got a schema here because this is a, a replicated database. Uh, there are some differences between the data in Airtable and your data on the sync in the service. So you might need to familiarize yourself with the schema of your new database which you're querying. Um, so if you look in the schema, you get the table names. Notice they're all lowercase and these spaces have been replaced with underscores. And you also have different data types. So you have texts and arrays, numeric. So we wanted to do a sum, but if we have a look here in our sales order, 
price, price underscore f is what we're referring, it's text. So we need to convert it to an integer first, uh, hence the int in our query. If you'll notice here that the price, which was the original uh, price here, which is a lookup field, is an array uh, in, in our Postgres database. Uh, you don't seem to be able to uh, convert those into integers. So what I have done is I've created a formula field which replicates that price field, but it's just a formula. Um, and I've been able to do the sum on that formula field, dot field, but I wasn't able to do it in the original uh, lookup field. So there's a there's a limitation for you. Uh, and that's that's how you do that simple query. But you can already do achieve that with your Airtable. So what's the value of this? Well, let's look at a much more complex query and I'll show you what you can achieve with uh, SQL here. So say, for example, these were uh, our inventory and we wanted to reorder products, uh, but only when the inventory for those products, which is the units uh, here, ordered minus a unit sold fell below 10. That was when we, when we wanted to do a just in time order. Well, we could do that in our table. We could set up a, another view here where the inventory was less than 10. And then we could do a roll up field to our manufacturer's field, which contains the name of our manufacturers for each of those products and the email. Uh, and that would suffice, but it would be a lots of extra fields, copied roll-up fields, just for the sake of a, a simple query. And what happens um, when you have lots of views which are doing uh, specific queries for you is that you can get into trouble if you don't lock them down. Um, you forget what they're for. I've forgotten what things are for in the past. And if you edit them, um, that the, the power of that view to, to perform that querying function is, is um, nullified. So it's much better to perform queries as queries rather than as table views. So let's go over to our queries here. If you're creating complex queries, you're going to want to save them. So I've got here what the query. I've called it units to reorder. Could add notes, for example, of when when you when you need to make that query as well. Yes, these are time-based queries. I'm just going to run this query. Let me let me run it and then let me talk you through what we've done. Okay, so it's come out. We want name the name of the manufacturer, the email, the product number, and the inventory. You can see these are all less than. So what are we doing here? We're selecting the manufacturer name, the manufacturer email, the product inventory, product ID, as product, which we've got here, and the product inventory from the manufacturer's name. So then what we have to do is we have to do an inner join. So this is the same as a linked uh, field in our table. So we're inner joining product inventory on product inventory .id equals any manufacturer's product. So this is an array. So we want to look in all the arrayed items to, to see if we can see any, any that matches the ID. Um, and we're doing this where product inventory uh, here, again, we're turning that into an integer, is less than 10. So that's how we're achieving what's a relatively complex query. And you can build on these and create some quite deep searches from joining various tables um, to be able to perform uh, some quite uh, complex statistical calculations really um, on your data, which I think is a really exciting thing and opportunity uh, for you to be able to do with your Airtable database. So uh, kudos to the guys at Syncing. Thank you for creating this for us. Um, as I say, you'll probably need a pro account, I think, to install the app, but Syncing have free for um, uh, Airtable bases with less than 2,000 rows. I haven't checked that into their website. Um, so give it a go, try it out. Um,
and let me know what you're using it for. And if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys.